All right. Thank you. Sorry for the uh, rush start. Um, so I'm Tom Kanicki. I this project. I'm going to go over some work I did with the U.S. Geological Survey in tandem with uh, Tim Shaw, but formerly Open Geo, now Boundless. Uh, we worked on developing a technique <coughs> to visualize uh, data in the browser with real-time stylization and symbolization using HTML5. Uh, that, that's the work Tim started. Um, the work was initially founded um, by the USGS 2012 CDI. That's the Council for Data Integration. That's the USGS's initiative to kind of um, broaden the use of open standards and open source within uh, that department. Um, Tim Schaub and John Aguinaldo of the USGS um, performed the first pass of the work. And at the CDI demo in 2012, they presented this HTML5 rendering pipeline in open layers. And when I saw this, I was very excited because uh, at the USGS, I worked in the Office of Water Informatics. And we deal with some very large data sets. Um, as an example, the NHD, the National Hydrography data set, um, with well over 2 million features, um, every stream in the United States. Um, so when we're asked to perform visualizations, um, and our scientists say they want to visualize you know, the, the steam stream network for an entire state, you know, I, I kind of uh, was in the awkward posi position of chuckling and saying, oh, that's technically infeasible. And uh, when I saw this work, I was really excited because I thought, wow, um, maybe we can start looking at some real data in the browser. Um, so my work was my contribution to this project was to optimize the rendering pipeline. Um, I have a background in OpenGL in, in visualization. And up until this point, I had never touched JavaScript. And when I saw this work, I thought, wow, this is actually an interesting language now. Um, and the work that Tim did, we bundled as a simple extension to OpenLayers. This is based on 2.12. Uh, it works with, with 2.13. Um, and then the other part of my contribution was to develop a method for vending the quantitative data to the browser using open standards. So in the initial demos, um, they had a set of handcrafted PNG files that they would then vend the browser and then stylize dynamically. And I worked on a method for essentially vending that data to the browser using WMS. Um, and so of course, standards-based, which is good, and then open source, which is even better. So I'm going to go over the existing methods. Um, probably I can cruise through these. We probably all understand. Um, so the existing method of vending data to the browser is one method is a single image, single image rendering, where the overlay is requested and displayed as a single image. Um, the single image covers the entire map extent. Any kind of user interaction, panning, zooming, or style changes require a brand new request for the entire uh, viewport to the server. And because of this, image caching is not possible. So our next method, uh, even better, is the multiple tile rendering. So uh, the user or the, the, the developer decides to uh, request tiles as, as opposed to a single image. And these tiles are kind of quantized on a tie point and fixed sizes. And uh, you can reuse the tiles you're panning. It's really nice. You just load the leading edge. Um, but for every zoom level or style change, you have to request a new tile set. So image caching is possible uh, with some caveats, but it's not ideal. So here's an example of the problem we were facing at the USGS. Um, this is the entire stream network for the Great Lakes, the US portion of the Great Lakes Basin. Um, visualized, uh, well, tied into some model output um, for some stream network. Um, stream network model. So 114,000 features um, tied to a model. This image using standard methods, even with tiling, took about 30 seconds. Um, so any modification of the color map, um, any style changes, the user's in for a, a little bit of hurt. And their patience will be uh, tried. So the method I'm going to present. What we decided to try is to essentially pre-render the tiles. And so the analogy here is Java bytecode, where we essentially kind of half complete the rendering. So instead of taking a style and rendering the final colors to the image, we took a style that allowed us to render into the image, the PNG file, the WMS tile, an identifier or primary key. 
or the actual attribute value that we're interested in stylizing in the browser. Um, if one was to use the identifier or primary key, we often found that we could render primary keys to the image tile and then obtain supple supplemental information using WFS. So we could basically do a, a, a table lookup in the browser. Um, and what that allowed us to do is to apply the styling in the browser. Uh, so color maps or feature calling, um, dynamic symbolization, uh, without having to request a whole new tile set. And so the benefits are the rendering costs on the server side is incurred once. The tiles, the attribute values never change for a, a given layer. Uh, the tiles are cacheable and the rendering in the browser is extremely responsive. Uh, and this work was not possible until the recent release, oh, not so recent anymore, but uh, GeoServer 2.2. And the uh, key functionality in that release for us were the implementation of rendering transforms. So a rendering transform is a way of essentially customizing the rendering pipeline, um, allowing for the introduction of WPS processes to be called. Um, so that allowed us to customize how the tiles are rendered, um, which is very, uh, very powerful. And the, in addition to that, the integrated tile caching with WMS um, with a simple command line addition, you can request your tiles through the WMS endpoint and they'll be implicitly cached by the server. So it's a very low effort uh, on the client side. And, and again, the open layers work by Tim and John, um, and this includes the HTML5 rendering pipeline. I need this to make sure everyone knows it was sponsored by the USGS. Um, and here's this uh, graphic. When I present the presentation for approval, they said I need more pictures, so um, this is a picture. <laughs> <laughs> On the top is the traditional rendering uh, method, so every single, st the, the point of this is you have an image, it comes from the server, it's final, it's pretty, it's ready to use, but any changes you need to go back to the server and wait for rendering. Uh, whereas in the bottom is this new technique where basically we create this image, it's, you know, it's not quite ready for visualization yet, um, and then we apply the styling in the browser um, then any change in styling, we just kind of don't require any server-side requests. So to go over the rendering transform, um, what we did was we developed a WPS process, which implemented a vector to uh, raster transform. So we customized how the features, the geometry, was actually uh, deposited in the, in the raster. And um, it, as it's a WPS process, it's available for direct execution or you can link it into WMS with an SLD. Um, and this, this, poor the, this functionality is specific to GeoServer, just it's not an open standard. I mean, it's based on open standards, but um, the peanut butter and jelly, the sandwich, is not open. Um, what's an SLD? Uh, it's a stylized layer descriptor. So it's a way of customizing the rendering of image tiles. And as far as the inputs to this rendering transform, um, there are a number of implicit inputs that one can grab from the WMS request. So bounding box, tile size, um, in addition, the feature collection to render. So when that arrives at the WPS process, it's already clipped for the tile. And in a, the additional uh, arguments that we implemented for our process were the attribute to render. So uh, for a given stream, as an example, we could render the stream order, which is uh, arbitrary measure of, of magnitude, the size of the stream. And if we had multiple features overlay, overlaying a single pixel, uh, we could choose an attribute for precedence so that a uh, minor value didn't overwrite a major value um, independent of the sorting of the feature collection. And this outputs a, a raster. And as far as the implementation of this, um, for each feature, we deposit that onto the raster, and again, multiple features, if they multiple features intersect, we, we use precedence uh, based on a, an attribute. Um, an important thing to note about this technique is attribute values that you render to the image are limited to 24 bits, and that's kind of an artifact of how images are handled in the browser. Um, the alpha value must be one. Um, you cannot have any um, transparency assigned. You can't use that pixel, and uh, the reason for that is that in the HTML5 canvas when you, so you have to write the image data to the HTML5 canvas so that you can in turn read it. But in the process of writing, um, almost all, I'm going to say all 
I, I haven't seen any that don't. Almost all browsers will, as an optimization, will pre-multiply alpha when they write the values to the canvas. And that's so that every single read, you don't need to apply that alpha. So the problem is that when we want to read the, the values from the canvas to manipulate them, um, this alpha value is then divided out from the pre-multiplied values, and that transformation is lossy. So if you have any alpha, you'll see some picket fencing in your data. Um, you won't get the same values out that you put in. Um, so to avoid the alpha value on the Java side, there's two. we had to develop a cu custom alpha compositor. Um, one is to disable any anti-aliasing, because anti-aliasing will introduce um, or can introduce uh, values, non-transparent uh, values in the alpha channel. And then again, the alpha compositor to implement precedence. When we were compositing the feature on the image, we wanted to control um, ordering. And so that was done in the alpha compositor. Now this um, rendering transform is very slow. And as an optimization wonk, I wanted to make it faster and better. Um, but because of the fact that these tiles can be cacheable, this slow rendering is a one-time cost and it can be neglected. And again, the other portion of providing data to the browser is WFS. And this is just, you know, for the browser, you can request um, supplemental data in JSON. It's very easy to manipulate in the browser. Um, key point here is if you're running an identifier in the image, you want to pull the identifier out in the WFS request and provide any attributes you want to use for stylization in the browser. Um, typically, the same data store, um, a WFS view of the data store in tandem with the WMS, but it doesn't have to be that way. Um, a couple examples of that is we utilize WPS uh, processes to run models and um, use the output from that WPS process to then stylize the image in the browser based on a shared identifier set. I'm going to go into tile caching now. Um, GeoWebCache is now integrated into GeoServer. It has been for a while. Um, the important part for us was the WMS integration, so uh, the, the seamless you don't know it's cached. Um, the, the tile vendor implements that for you. Um, there are a couple caveats. You have to use a tie point <coughs> zero, 00. Tile size has to be 256 squared. And you're, of course, um, restricted to the standard zoom levels. Um, if you are interested in using other tiling protocols, they're available. Um, but WMS, excuse me, <coughs> and GeoServer 2.2 is uh, simple and easy to use. And for us, we typically seeded the cache for the lower zoom levels, as those were extremely expensive to render for us. Um, and other nice thing about GeoServer 2.2 is that you're allowed to create caches now for each time step, um, style, and CRS. Now, on the JavaScript side, uh, this is a, a description of the HTML5 rendering pipeline that Tim created. There's essentially three components. Uh, one is the WMS compositing layer. This is the layer that's responsible for making the tile request and then writing it to the HTML5 canvas. Um, then there's a pipeline operation that you create. This is specific to your application. Uh, it's just a short, small function that gets run once per pixel per render pass. And then there is the rendered raster layer, which is the target of the uh, rendering pipeline operation. And one thing to know about the pipeline operation is you can chain them. If you create one, you can reuse it. Uh, create a suite of a library of pipeline operations um, to compose. And again, based on OpenLayers 2.12, it is released. Well, the, the functionality is not released, but it's available as an extension um, at the GitHub site of USGS CETA, a former employer. <coughs> now, a little bit of description about the WMS composite layer. Um, it is a WMS instance. Uh, you basically specify when you, this is the data layer, the raw data layer. So when you're making your WMS request, WMS request you specify the style utilizing the rendering transform. Um, that performs the custom rendering. Um, enable tiling, uh, disable visibility. You do, not, you do not want to see the raw data. Open layers itself cannot discriminate between a data layer and a non-data layer. So you manually have to, to turn that, the visualization of that data layer off. Um, specify, specify PNG as an image format. Um, this is a lossless format. You don't want your data to get, get corrupted. Um, and then uh, one thing about using HTML5 Canvas is that 
it's very picky about who can read and write and where the data is sourced from. So you're restricted to same origin policy or course, even though it is an image. Um, and that's, all, again, it's you, you can write to the canvas all you want, but unless you have these security issues handled, uh, you cannot read from it. And then you add that composite layer to the open layers map instance so that any s map operation, um, the tiles are re-requested and rewritten to the HTML5 canvas we read from. Um, I can, these are details I can probably skip given time. The pipeline operation, um, you're essentially creating a function and you're wrapping this in an operation instance. Um, it's a simple function, it takes a pixel and an X and a Y and it takes, and then the only response is an integer, the integer to be rendered to the uh, canvas. Um, optimization for this is very important because this gets called every single, for every single pixel, for every single render request. Now the raster layer is just the target of the pipeline operation. Um, you call set data after you create operation and then on every render pass it's rendered to the map. So it's just, a, it's just another layer. So this is another layer you add um, to your open layers map instance. And here's some sample code, and I don't expect you to read this, just to give you an idea of how, sm how little code it requires in the browser. Um, this is the custom pixel operation. Um, and all this one does here is it basically looks at the value in the image, and if it's above a threshold, it renders it. If not, it throws it away. Thank you. Let's give a quick demo, see how this works. All right. so. This is the same image I showed earlier that took us 30 seconds to render um, for every single style change. And I'm going to show you here how I can dynamically change the color mapping and how it's rendered in real time. So, so yeah. So it's a WMS tile set, um, 114,000 features. Uh, with a jet color map that's applied and calculated on the fly. So it's, it's, this color map is not even in, uh, indexed. It's just calculated on the fly, continuous. So um, I was really surprised and happy with the performance of HTML5. And uh, it was nice to be able to vend the data using open standards and GeoServer and open layers. So it was a, a very exciting project. So thanks for your attention.